welcome once again to Best Practices in TESOL, a program devoted to examining teaching and learning contexts in ESL classrooms. We continue our conversation on the ways in which informed practitioners encourage teaching and learning experiences that are positive and fulfilling. I am Kuldeep Kaur and a teacher educator from the University of Malaya. I have with me here today Azlina Azmar, who is an experienced practitioner in ESL. Azlina will now briefly describe some of the themes that we will discuss on informed practice. Thank you, Kuldeep. The first theme we will discuss today is effective explanations and directions for task performance. Secondly, we will also look at some ways in which teachers can encourage their students to actively respond to questions that are orally posed in class. In tandem to this, we will see how teachers can encourage variety in students' speech and writing. Another area we wish to explore is the close relationship between authentic tasks and the integration of skills in an ESL lesson. So stay tuned and together we will visit some ESL classrooms. Thank you, Azlina. We will look at two primary school teachers' classrooms. The first classroom we will visit is Miss Kingsley's from SK LaSalle Klang. And the second one is Miss Bhavanese from SJKT Puchong. We begin our discussion today by talking about effective explanations and directions that teachers have to give to their students. We are all aware of the need for teachers to give explanations, directions or instructions that are clear and well articulated. First of all, explanations are a necessary component of best practice. They help learners see the aims of a task and support learners' contributions by defining the parameters of that task. In cases where instructions are not clear to students, the teacher may lose her student's attention or the two parties may set very different goals for the lesson. Another important aspect of instructions and directions is the point and manner in which they are given. When teachers are ready to give instructions for a task, it is important that they have the student's fullest attention. Also, when directions have been given, it may be useful to encourage questions from the students so that they too may be able to clarify the directions for the task. In relation to this theme, let us now visit Ms. Kingsley's class. In a few moments, you will see a classroom session where Miss Kingsley gives oral directions for performing a task on letter writing. You will notice that the class is divided into several groups and two different letter writing tasks are assigned. Let us look at this now. Now I want you to read these sentences. Maybe groups 1, 2 and 3 Read the first four sentences. Groups three, four, and five will read the next four sentences to just get the flow of the whole letter. Right? When you read, you must read with expression. This is not a sing-song kind of a letter. You are writing a letter to your grandson. So the feelings of the grandma. I want you to read with feelings. Right? Now this time it's a writing task. Groups four five and six, you are going to do task A. And task A is the information that is given to you on this sentence cards. You use all the information that is given to you. 
you are going to write grandma's letter to Lot in a paragraph. All right? You're going to use your expressions. All right? You're going to use your expressions to do task A. Do you understand? Yes. Now, groups one, two, and three, you are going to have a little bit more challenging. All right? You're going to reply your grandma. All right? So you are going to be Lot. You are going to reply grandma's letter. So what you have got to do is look again at the information that is given. Look at the questions that grandma has asked. And your task is to convince your grandma. In whatever way that you're going to do, you're going to convince her that you are not going to be a bad boy. You're not going to be in bad company because your grandma has brought you up well. Now you're going to use expressions on your own to express this letter to your grandma. Can you, do you think you can do that? Yes. Do you think you will be able to do that? Yes. Right. Uh... Cool, Dave. I noticed that Miss Kingsley gave her directions in a calm and natural manner. Yes, she did indeed. Um, and it was obvious that uh, she had thought about what she wanted to say before she gave the directions. Mm -hmm. Uh, and, and she thought about what she wanted to see in the students' written products. I mm. agree. In all language lessons, teachers try very hard to get the students to contribute ideas to the class. Further, teachers also encourage variety in students' written and spoken responses. Miss Kingsley does this by asking open-ended questions and then encourages several students to answer each question. Let us now see how this teacher does this successfully in her class. How would you communicate with each other these days? All right. There are many ways in which you communicate. Uh, Levin? By telephone. By the telephone, yes, that's one way. Paul? By letters. By letters. Arwin? Fax machines. By fax machines, yes. Uh, Kunalan? By telephone. By telephone. By the handphone. By handphones. By email. By email. All these ways you can communicate with each other. But today you're going to communicate. Well, that was an excellent example of encouraging variety in students' contributions. Uh, one other point that I would like to bring up is the fact that Miss Kingsley gets her students to draw conclusions and then justify their answers orally. Let us see how this is done in her class. Boys, now that you have looked at the ca cartoon strip carefully, I'm sure you have visualized and drawn your conclusions. Now, can one of you tell me what conclusion you have drawn? Yes, Yang Hong? I think he is doing his homework. You think the boy is doing his homework? Yes, it's one way of looking at that cartoon strip. Yes, Arwin, can you give me your conclusion? I think the boy is writing an essay and his grandmother is helping him to write. Well, Arvin says that he thinks that the boy is writing an essay and his grandmother is helping him. Well, excellent. That's one way too. All right. Let's have one other conclusion. Daya? I think the boy is writing a letter. The boy is writing a letter. Well, the boy is writing a letter. And what is that lady in the cartoon doing? Who is she? How is she related to the boy? Logendra? I think she is his grandmother. I think that she is his grandmother. Now how do you conclude that she is a grandmother? She looks quite old. That's right, Logendra. That lady is the grandma. Alright? So in this cartoon strip, you see the grandma. Okay. Uh, she also related the content of the lesson to some social issues the learners deal with in their daily lives. You will notice in the next segment how this objective is achieved.
Now, you have come to the end of the lesson. I want you to look at those uh, sentence cards and those cartoons, the cartoon strip, and try to coin a moral value that you have learned from this lesson. We always end up learning a moral value in, in English, all right? So I want you to think up a moral value that you have learned from this whole lesson. Kunalan? We must always listen to our elders' advice. We should listen to our elders' advice. Good. Any more? Levin? We should not mix with bad company. Because it harms our lives. Alright. Good. Anyone else? Arvin? I think wherever we go, we have to discipline ourselves. Wherever we go, we must discipline ourselves. One last response. Elston, can you try? We should keep away from bad habits and bad company as it will only ruin your life. We should keep away from bad habits and bad company as it will only ruin our lives. Ruin our lives means destroy us rather than build us up. All right? So you have learned some good moral values. Udip, I think that was an instance of multiple processing. I liked the way in which the teacher encourages the students to talk about what they are thinking and feeling. It gives one insight into the way in which students are processing the information discussed during the lesson. Yes, that is true. And uh, this brings us to the next part of the lesson where the students read aloud what they've written and the teacher proceeds to give an oral evaluation of their work. Uh, you will see soon that this part of the lesson consolidates uh, the learning from carefully articulated instructions um, an opportunity to draw and allow for learners' contributions, as well as from um, you know an encouraging response to students' um, you know contributions as far as taking a stand and justifying that stand is concerned. Now let us see how this happens and what the students have to say. Well, boys, I'm sure I've given you enough time to write your tasks. Have you finished? Yes. Good. Now I'm going to call a representative from each group. So you're going to come forward and you're going to read your letters. So who's going to come out from the first group? Levin? Come, read your letter. The others pay attention. Listen to what he has written. Dear lad, Granny is feeling very well. Hope you are as well as her. Lad, how are you then? Are you eating well? Do you get the food like you get it as well as you get it here in our kampong? I think you'll miss my delicious chicken renang that you like. Now that you are in the town all by your own, you must be beware of pickpockets and strangers. Don't get mixed up with bad company. If you do, they teach you bad habits such as smoking, drinking, and taking drugs. Always remember whatever Granny has said because it helped you to be a better person. If you don't, I skin you alive. Your loving Grandma, Tima. Yes, that was a very good, well expressed letter. Did you see that he used some of his own words? Beware. Alright, and then he says something about the chicken rendang that Granny cooks. Alright, so that was very good. Let's hear another response. Uh, from this group, Arvin, would you come out and read your letter? The others, listen. Dear Grandma, I am fine and I am glad to know that you are fine too. Don't worry Grandma, although I am on my own, I am always very careful. I do remember the good values you have taught me. The thought of you skinning me alive will definitely keep me away from bad habits. I get quite good food and I am eating well. But of course, Grandma's food is always and will always ruin the best in the whole wide world. 
Don't worry about me joining bad company and getting mixed up with drugs, drinking alcohol and smoking. I know it will all harm me. I want to be a good student and make you proud of me. Oops, I almost forgot. Please send my love to all at home, especially to my little brother, Man. I have to pen off now as it is getting late. Shall write more in my next letter. Your loving grandson, Lud. Let us now move on to another teacher's classroom. Let us look at how Miss Bavani encourages her students to take an active role in the lesson. To begin, Miss Bavani provides her students with a list of written instructions. This is very different from what you saw in Miss Kingsley's class a short while ago where directions were given orally. Miss Bavani gives out the written instructions and requests that her students read them and use them as a guideline for her task. Let us look at this part of Miss Bavani's lesson. Today, we are going to make greeting cards, your own greeting cards. Okay. I will give out the instructions on the worksheets. You read the worksheets carefully, then you can make your own cards. All the materials are provided for you. Okay. You can check the materials from the checklist here. Okay. Then you can follow these instructions and start making your own cards. But please follow the instructions. Read the instructions carefully and then you start making your own cards. You, have your own you see Kuldeep, students involvement in the lesson moves on to a different plane. Instead of listening to the teacher's direction, students have to read, analyze and then follow the directions for making a card. This three-step procedure is useful for getting students to concentrate on the bi-level nature of the task. They read in order to make the card, hence simultaneously involving language and artistic expression in a single task. Thank you, Aslina. Let us move on. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, as most of us are aware, self-evaluations and peer evaluations are a significant part of learning. In Ms. Bhavani's class, a checklist is used for this purpose. After making the card, the students take part in a process account, which is a way of rethinking, evaluating and recounting the many procedures that they undertook in order to make the card. What Ms. Bhavani does is that she gives them a checklist and then reads aloud each item on the checklist so that students listen and think about how they made their cards. And then she does something else. The students move a step further and write a paragraph on the process account using the checklist as a guide. This way, they self-evaluate, focus on the process, and use writing as a medium of expression for the recount. And now, let us look at how this happens in Miss Bhavani's class. Okay, now, you have to listen carefully to my questions, then you just tick your answers here. Okay, class? Now, can you see how many questions are here? How many parts? Yeah, five parts, right? Okay. Listen to my questions, then tick the answer. Tick or look at the instructions and follow that. Okay? Question one. What greeting card did you make? What greeting card did you make? Two, how many colors did you use? How many colors did you use? Okay, got that? 
क्वेश्चन थ्री मैच द कॉलम्स मैच कॉलम ए टू कॉलम बी मैच द फेस्टिव डेज इन कॉलम ए टू द मंथ इन कॉलम बी Well, that must have been a good experience for the students. I think that sort of task gives teachers an avenue for thinking about the learning process. In a situation like this, the product does not take precedence over the process. Yes, that was my uh, reading of the situation too. What Bhavani has also achieved is a lesson which sees the successful integration of reading, writing, listening and speaking. During this lesson, students had to read the instructions given on the worksheet. They had to listen during the process account. They wrote out the recount in paragraph form and they finally read their written protocols aloud. Most importantly, and this I cannot emphasize enough, Ms. Bhavani had her students doing authentic tasks. These tasks were well integrated in terms of how they lent support to each other, as well as in the way they involved thinking, listening, reading, writing and speaking. Further, the students evaluated their work thought about the linguistic expressions to describe their cards and they drew designs, pictures and therefore they were able to utilize a multitude of intelligences during this short sp space. Let us now listen to some of these students as they read aloud their work. Are you ready? Any group? Have you completed? Okay. Shall I have a seat? Turn loudly. I made a happy birthday card. I used glue, drawing paper, colors, pencil, color paper, ruler and scissors. I used many types of colors such as red, green, purple and blue. I enjoyed English lesson very much. I made a New Year card. I used drawing paper, colors, ruler, pencils, paint brush, eraser and scissors. I used many types of colors such as orange, blue, green and yellow. I enjoy my art lesson very much. As a final comment, I would like to say that today's discussion focused on a variety of issues linked to the make-up of an informed practitioner. I hope you found the discussion useful and will try to uncover new ways of conducting effective lessons in your own classrooms. Thank you for being with us during this episode of Best Practices in Teaching English as a Second Language. Until we meet again, goodbye and happy learning from your teaching. <laughs> <laughs>